Here are the top stories for today, December 28, 2021. Don't rub salt into the wound. President Rodrigo Duterte calls on communist rebels to refrain from sabotaging the government's typhoon relief efforts. He is also keeping a close watch on looting incidents. No reason to panic. The uptick in Metro Manila's COVID-19 positivity rate is due to gatherings for the holiday season and not the Omicron variant, but it warns people not to let their guard down. Ensuring safety and compliance, local officials in the country's firecracker capital, Bokawe, Bulacan, inspects tours a few days before the New Year revelry. And heads up foodies, a haven of affordable and mouth-watering treats is just within reach in the city of Malabon. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippine National Police assures assistance amid reports of looting caused by lack of food and other basic supplies in communities battered by Typhoon Odette. In a logging handout briefing today, PNP spokesperson Colonel Roderick Alba, however, said there is no complaints received yet with regards to looting incidents. Uh, things I mean, information na yan regarding looting, but uh, unfortunately, until today, ay wala tayong uh, na-receive officially no, na nagtumulog sa ating mga police stations, particularly sa area ng uh, Bohol and parts are, I think, is in Siargao. Ngayon po sa instruction ng ating uh, Pangulo, Kami naman po ay uh, alam namin na maging positive ang epekto ng ayuda na binibigay ng ating national government that could address itong sinasabi nating uh, looting incidents. But uh, of course, uh, Ma'am Rocky, kami naman po ay uh, uh, we are vigilant kung mayroon mang nangailangan ng tulong namin regarding uh, kung mayroong mga resort to criminality, ay nag-antabay lang po ang ating uh, kapulisan. Alba also said that looters will be dealt with under the law. Alam natin naman is uh, we declared yung uh, or we push for a preemptive evacuation or even force evacuation dun sa mga communities natin na talag masabi natin under threat no no ng uh, kasagsaga ng typhoon or that. Now if uh, they remain no dudon sa mga areas na yon, ay uh, probably we could give uh, some due consideration. But of course after this time na dumating na yung ayuda ng ating gobyerno at talagang patuloy pa rin da patapatin na mag take advantage yung ibang kababayan natin, they will resort to uh, criminality. Then, of course, uh, Yusak Raki, there will be no excuses for it. Kasi, um, apektado po. Uh, it should be fair, no, yung uh, distribution ng ating mga ayuda. At kung may mag-take uh, advantage, they, they will be dealt with uh, properly according to our, uh, under our procedure, our under, law, under our laws. Filipinos are reminded against the use of firecrackers to welcome the new year. As of yesterday morning, the Department of Health, or DOH, so far logged a total of 19 firecracker-related injuries ahead of the new year. The DOH says all cases were injuries due to fireworks. There were no cases of fireworks ingestion, stray bullet injury, or death so far. 37% of the said cases occurred in Western Visayas. In Metro Manila, the National Capital Region Police Office will remain on full alert status to secure the community fireworks display zones. Na kami sa part sa PNP, eh, kung pwede nga, we discourage yung paggamit ng uh, firecrackers during the, the celebration ng New Year. Kasi we have so many ways no, in celebrating this uh, peacefully without uh, hurting somebody using uh, firecrackers. President Rodrigo Duterte is hopeful that the Communist New People's Army will not tinker with the government's operations to bring back normalcy in typhoon-hit areas. During his pre-recorded talk to the people last night, the president said he has been mobilizing all the government's resources to augment the disaster response and relief operations. I hope that the NPAs will not really tinker into the operation. Uh, uh, response in ang gobyerno. I was uh, having a conference with government people. Doon ko nalaman na sa si Palay, it was almost a quiet town. It's a city actually. Uh, how, ayoko nang yun, how it became uh, a city. Pero, kala namin wala. Ang damage pala nila, at hindi ka agad nalaman, those living sa coastal 
Tapos, uh, pagbaha, yung mga bahay-bahay doon, little did we realize that uh, so many people were carried away and homes were destroyed. No, pero papunta namin, pa, even during that day, it was only later that we were informed na sa Sipalay, Sipap Sipalay, maraming na damage, pati tao. So, kayong taga Sipalay, we convey to you uh, our deepest uh, condolences. Lalo na yung isang pamilya, dalawang pamilya. Na. So, it's, I said, a, a soul-bruising uh, experience for us all. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año in his report to the President said the total number of affected individuals has so far reached 4,204,601. A total of 1,179 evacuation centers are catering to about 570,906 displaced persons. Anya said the government is just now focusing its relief operations on six regions, 14 provinces, and 222 cities and municipalities hit hard by the typhoon. He said the government still has to restore 130 power outages, 17 water supplies, and 371 communication lines in affected areas. Meanwhile, President Duterte said business owners profiteering from consumer goods in the aftermath of Typhoon Odette may be arrested. He told Secretary Ramon Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, to immediately cap the prices of the goods and medicines. Could you tell us, uh, what I'm worried is really the, the, we have to put a stop on this and probably we can go, go ahead and cap the prices of uh, the goods. Uh, available, especially medicine. Uh, tama ho, Mr. President, kasama ho sa report natin, uh, i-advance ko lang yung part na yon. na una-una, nung mga nag-declare ng state of calamity, nag-umpisa na na yung ating price cap. No? So may price control na tayo, uh, ibig sabihin ay uh, yung uh, price freeze natin, kung ano yung presyo bago mag-pandemic uh, at bago magbagyo, I mean, ay... Uh, uh, Yun po dapat ang presyo, hindi gagalaw. Uh, the day after, uh, I think mga hanggang two days after, habang nagkakagulo pa rin, uh, marami ho talagang na-report na nag-price na uh, increase, na nag-samantala. Uh, in fact, ang order po namin, ang order ko po sa ating mga kasama, yung mga enforcers natin, ay talagang mag-aresto ng overpricing. Actually, mga marami ho talaga dyang na na apprehend ay dyan po sa area ng Bohol at Cebu. Uh, Narbalitaan din po natin yung nagtaas ng mga genset. So lahat po nung mga nireport sa amin ay atin pong pinapuntahan. Over 1 million families or more than 4 million individuals have been affected by Typhoon Odette. In a press briefing today, NDRRMC Executive Director and Office of the Civil Defense Administrator Ricardo Halad said over 560,000 persons are currently sheltered in evacuation centers. Death toll stands at 397 with 83 missing and 1,147 injured persons. The estimated cost of damage to agriculture is over 5.3 billion pesos. Damage to infrastructure is at over 16.7 billion pesos and damaged houses is at 28 million pesos. Halad says among the NDRRMC logistics services include land, air and sea assets. A total of 240,000 kilograms of relief have been delivered and about 104,340 liters of water were provided to Visayas and Mindanao, among others. Electricity in Cebu may be fully restored by next month. Meanwhile, more help is underway for Typhoon Odette victims in the Visayas and Mindanao. The details from Chris Crismundo. In Antique, the DSWD is sending more family food packs to Typhoon Odette victims in the province. DSWD particularly identified the towns of Barbaza, Lawaan, Libertad, and Patnongon. 
One family food pack contains six kilos of rice, two cans of sardines, four cans of corned beef, four cans of tuna, five sachets of coffee, and five sachets of cereal drinks. DSWD Antique team leader Mel Rose Amaran said the agency had already distributed 6,589 food packs in eight municipalities of the province as of December 23. In Ilocos Norte, the provincial government has allotted 3 million pesos to help the typhoon victims in Visayas and Mindanao. A wing van was dispatched last Saturday containing the first batch of grocery items, used clothing, water, rice, and other essentials. The Provincial Resiliency Office under the provincial government is still collecting donations ready for the next shipping in aid of the typhoon victims. And in Cebu, the Visayan Electric Corporation or VECO is targeting to restore the electricity of 142,000 homes in Metro Cebu by December 31. Based on the VECO's latest forecast, 30% of its coverage area will have its power restored before the year ends while all 474,000 customers under VECO's coverage area are projected to have their electricity restored by end of January 2022. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. Qualified government workers have another reason to celebrate this holiday season as they are set to receive a one-time service recognition incentive worth 10,000 pesos. Signed by President Duterte on December 24, Administrative Order No. 45 authorizes the grant of incentives to reward an employee's loyalty to government service and contributions to the agency's continuing viable existence. Nilagdaan ni Pangulong Duterte ang Administrative Order No. 45 na nagbibigay otoridad na mag-grant ng One-Time Service Recognition Incentive or SRI at uniform rate sa mga personnel ng nasa Executive Department na hindi lalampas sa 10,000 piso. Kasama rito ang mga civilian personnel na nasa regular, contractual, or casual positions. At mga uniformed personnel. Kinakailangan lamang ay nasa government service with at least 4 months of satisfactory service as of November 30, 2021. Sa mga wala pang apat na buwan na serbisyo, mabibigyan pa rin sila ng prorated incentive. Still ahead, no let up in fighting COVID-19. The number of COVID-19 jabs delivered to the country exceeds 202 million. And the Okta Research Group says there is no reason for alarm for the slight increase in the NCR's COVID-19 positivity rate. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Mga kabida, importante pa rin ang disiplina sa pag-iwas sa pagkalat ng COVID-19 upang masiguro ang kaligtasan ninyo at inyong mga pamilya. Hanapin ang safety seal sticker sa inyong pupuntahan. Mapamuan man ito, kainan, pasyalan o kahit na anumang public o private business establishment. Ang safety seal ay tanda ng isang establishment ay sumusunod sa minimum public health standards ng gobyerno upang maiwasan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Ating tandaan, bida ang may tatak. Hashtag safety seal para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. The Philippines breached the 200 million mark of COVID-19 vaccine doses arrival following the delivery of two shipments yesterday. 
Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said deliveries have reached 202,660,355, counting the 587,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine donated by Germany that arrived Monday afternoon and the 1,187,550 doses of government procured Pfizer BioNTech jab scheduled later in the night. On Sunday, 105,300 doses of Pfizer vaccine similarly purchased by the government were shipped to Davao. By the end of the year, doses are expected to reach 217.34 million, both procured and donated. Meanwhile, the total number of administered doses in the country has reached 106,290,941. Fully vaccinated individuals is now at 62.05%, while those who got their first dose is at 78.83%. Sa dami ng mga bakunang dumating, mahigit 200 million doses, sapat na ang ating supply para mabakunahan ang at least 100 million na Pilipino sa buong bansa at pwede na po tayong magbigay pati booster shots. Kaya naman, inihikayat namin ang lahat ng eligible na magpa-booster shots para sa kanilang proteksyon. Lalo na may banta ng Omicron variant. As the Department of Health earlier reported, meron na po tayong na-detect na apat na kaso ng Omicron variant sa Batsa. The Okta Research Group pointed to the holiday frenzy and not the Omicron variant as the reason for the slight spread of COVID-19 in Metro Manila. Based on the two-week growth rates, the positivity rate went up by 1.4%, average daily attack rate was at 0.82% and reproduction hit 0.85%. Okta Research Fellow Dr. Guido David said the increase in gatherings among holiday revelers most likely led to the slight spike in numbers. He said this may not be Omicron driven because a similar increase happened last year. He said a clear picture as to how the COVID-19 cases suddenly increased might be available until the first week of January next year. Four cases of the Omicron variant have been confirmed so far. Meantime, David reminded the public to continue adhering to minimum public health standards and avail of COVID-19 vaccines. The mayor of Lopez, Haina, Misamis Occidental, died a week after a suspected sniper attack in Tangub City. Councillor Andrea Gutierrez, daughter of Mayor Michael Gutierrez, announced his death on Facebook on Monday. Gutierrez was hurt in the attack during a Christmas party on December 22nd. Police said Gutierrez was hit on the nape with slug and glass debris by a sniper bullet supposedly meant to hit 2nd District Representative Henry Oaminal. Gutierrez was supposed to run for vice governor in tandem with Oaminal, who will run for governor in the 2022 elections. Oaminal has dangled a 5 million peso bounty for anyone who could provide information that would lead to the capture of the assailants. First District Representative Diego T. also offered a 1 million peso bounty as he denied involvement in the attack. Provincial Governor Philip Tan, meanwhile, rejected allegations that the shooting was politically motivated. For his part, Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara said the National Bureau of Investigation will be on standby as the Philippine National Police makes their investigation. Almost 14,000 high-value targets across the country have been arrested since the start of the Duterte administration's crackdown on illegal drugs in 2016. Based on the latest real numbers data from the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, the biggest figure includes over 6,000 high-value targets arrested from high-impact operations. Authorities also arrested over 319,000 individuals involved in illegal drugs during the period. As of November this year, over 6,200 drug suspects have died in anti-illegal drug operations. From July 2016 to November 2021, authorities also arrested 4,086 minors. Authorities dismantled a total of 982 drug dens, including 18 clandestine Shabu laboratories in the same period. 
They seized illegal drugs worth 74.3 billion pesos, which include 62.35 billion pesos worth of shabu. Meanwhile, over 23,000 barangays have been declared drug cleared as of August 31st. Local officials on Monday inspected the shops in Bokawe, known as the center of the fireworks industry in Bulacan. Governor Daniel Fernando led the ocular inspection of several pyrotechnic stores in Barangay Turo. Fernando said the move ensures that the rules and regulations on manufacturing, sale and distribution are observed by manufacturers, dealers and retailers. The governor said he wanted to assure that health safety protocols are being observed in the town. Fernando directed the Bulacan police to intensify their crackdown against prohibited firecrackers such as Piccolo, Super Lolo, Judas Belt and other firecrackers with gunpowder exceeding 2 grams. Meanwhile, the Pyrotechnics Regulatory Board of Bulacan is pushing for a pyrotechnics testing laboratory to help revitalize and modernize the fireworks industry in the province. Up next, world leaders mourn the death of South Africa's anti-apartheid hero, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And ready to dig in for good food? You might want to check out treats in the city of Malabon. More stories when the PNA Newsroom returns. Follow me, Jonas Po, para sa kampanyang Disiplina Muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Bakit ba kailangan magparehistro sa pagpapabakuna laban sa COVID-19? Mahalaga magparehistro dahil ito ang unang step sa pagpapabakuna laban sa COVID-19. May tatlong pamamaraan upang makapagrehistro ang isang Pilipino na nais mabakunahan. Una, ang online registration sa inyong local government unit o LGU. Pangalawa, ang pagpunta sa mga vaccination centers at pagkuha ng registration form. At pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga pinuno ng barangay o sa mga barangay health center. Tandaan, online, sa mga vaccination site o sa mga barangay health centers ang pagpaparehistro sa pagpapabakuna kontra COVID-19. Muli ako po si Paolo Medjones, disiplina muna ambasador na nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna. Bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro at magpabakuna para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. As the New People's Army celebrated its 53rd anniversary on December 26, eight of their comrades surrendered to government troops and chose to turn away from insurgency. The insurgents based in the cities of Gihulengan and Canlaon in Negros Oriental were presented in rites held at the 62nd Infantry Battalion headquarters in Barangay Libas, Isabela Town. They said they have been deceived into joining the NPA with a promise of salary and ownership of land. During the said rites, the surrenderers burned the CPP-NPA flag to formalize the withdrawal of their support and affiliation with a communist terrorist group. Brigadier General Innocencio Pasaporte, commander of the 303rd Infantry Brigade, said the surrenderer indicates that the CPP-NPA has lost the support of the people in Negros Island. Pasaporte said they expect more NPA rebels to leave the armed struggle soon. The Department of National Defense and Department of the Interior and Local Government offered a 5.6 million peso cash reward for information that would lead to the arrest of a top leader of the New People's Army. 
The Army is pursuing Menandro Villanueva, alias Boc, Secretary of the NPA Southern Mindanao Regional Committee and one of the recognized high leaders of the Communist Party of the Philippines. He is facing a string of cases filed with pending warrants of arrest. Villanueva was spotted in an encounter in Davao de Oro on December 24, which led to the death of Ana Sandra Reyes, alias K, Secretary of the Regional White Area Committee. The neutralized CPP member has two standing criminal cases for attempted murder and murder with no bail before the regional court in Tagum City. In our news overseas, messages of condolences poured in from across the world as people mourn the death of South Africa's anti-apartheid campaigner, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu, on Sunday at the age of 90. In a Twitter post, Br British Prime Minister Boris Johnson hailed Tutu as a critical figure in the struggle to create a new South Africa. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, described Tutu as a respected elder spiritual brother and good friend. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa, meanwhile, bids farewell to Tutu as part of a generation of outstanding South Africans. Tutu rose to prominence in the 1980s for nonviolent opposition to apartheid rule in South Africa. Tutu served as the first black archbishop at the St. George's Cathedral in Cape Town in the 1980s and won the 1984 Nobel Peace Prize. In sports, preparations for the 31st Southeast Asian Games are now in high gear with over 600 athletes expecting to win medals in their respective fields. A chef de mission meeting is set in early January to discuss further preparations and other agenda. Philippine Olympic Committee President Bambol Tolentino said the country's chef de mission to the Games, Philippine Sports Commission Commissioner Ramon Fernandez and his deputies are expected to fly to Hanoi for the CONFAB. The second chef de mission and technical delegates meeting for the SEA Games is set on March 13. The multi-sport event, which Vietnam is hosting for the second time, was originally scheduled for November 21 to December 2, 2021. It was moved to May 12 to 23 next year amid tightened COVID-19 travel protocols. The city of Malabon has brought back one of its holiday traditions as quarantine restrictions ease up in time for Christmas. The Concepcion Food Bazaar offers Filipino and other international street food all in one place. Adrian Abelia, chief organizer of the bazaar, said he enjoys organizing bazaars because it supports a good cause, such as providing micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs with a chance to establish their own brands. Only online merchants, mostly young entrepreneurs, were allowed to participate in the bazaar to give them a chance to experience what it's like managing a physical store. Although bazaar is only expected to run until January, Abelia hopes that it would be a successful enough to be a permanent fixture in Malabon. The Concepcion Food Bazaar is open daily from 2 p.m. to 12 o'clock midnight along Pae Street, corner General Luna, Barangay Concepcion. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. Don't rub salt into the wound, President Rodrigo Duterte calls on communist rebels to refrain from sabotaging the government's typhoon relief efforts. He is also keeping a close watch on looting incidents. No reason to panic, the uptick in Metro Manila's COVID-19 positivity rate is due to gatherings for the holiday season and not the Omicron variant, but it warns people not to let their guard down. Ensuring safety and compliance, local officials in the country's firecracker capital, Bokawe, Bulacan, inspects tours a few days before the New Year revelry. And heads up foodies, a haven of affordable and mouth-watering treats is just within reach in the city of Malabon. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. 
So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And uh, for our uh, New Year's countdown, it is finally only four days till the year 2022. Let us hope for a better year ahead. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day, stay safe, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the holidays.